Here we have Charlie Chaplin in the lion's den. This is from the film Circus. We always associate risk as any action that is leading to undesirable outcome or loss. This situation, all of us would agree, is highly risky. Right? And he ended up getting inside that cage and we did not put him there. So we see this as a highly risky situation. But in reality, an inaction can also lead to high risk. A friend of mine is an addictive investor. Very recently, he did not act and pull out his stock at the right time. As a result, he ended up with a huge loss. So sometimes, inaction can also lead to high risk. So if I were to give a proper definition for risk, then that would be any potential activity or inactivity that leads to any undesirable outcome or loss to the organization, customers or yourself, as the case may be. So that's the broad definition of risk. And of course, presence of risk certainly increases uncertainty in any scenario. Once upon a time, only banks and financial institutions were worried about risk. But in today's economy, no business or industry is spared. Even pizza companies have to deal with huge risk. Take the example of Domino's. We all know about the incident where few rogue employees were seen in a video spitting in the food and putting cheese in their nose and many other things. Once this video was released online, it went viral and the organization overnight had lost its reputation and had to get into a huge PR and damage control activity. It costed them a huge sum. So all organizations in today's world aim to systematically identify and reduce their risks. We all will agree that it's not possible to eliminate risk altogether. But we can certainly minimize and keep it under control. In fact, in today's world, individuals like you and me also face enormous risk as compared to our earlier generations. There are risks associated with physical safety. There are risks associated with financial exposure. The kind of technology that has come into the financial services is leading to tremendous exposure of each one of us. Health hazards, very similar to the earlier example that I gave of financial exposure and of course reputational loss. So any of these can also lead to high risk for all of us. So risk is a very important concept that all of us should understand and appreciate and to some extent find ways of mitigating the risk. A traditional approach to risk has been that we are always trying to run away from risk, risk aversion. But as good leaders, we need to understand that it is not possible to take any good decision or in fact take any decision without risks. Every decision or every action or in fact inaction of yours certainly involves risk. So we have to identify a good balance between the risk that we are taking and the rewards that we are getting, which is what we call as risk reward balance. And if we do this, then we are acting in favor of our organizations and our own self. Here is an illustration of a potential relationship that exists between risk and reward. You find that as risk increases, reward increases naturally. This is a very hypothetical curve and it shows a very linear relationship between risk and reward. This may not necessarily be the case with the situations that you are dealing with. Having that said, our objective is to find out ways of reducing the risk such as this one where for a given amount of risk that you are taking, the rewards that you are getting is much higher. Or this scenario, very similar to the earlier one, though the graph might look different, end of the day, we are able to mitigate the risk and get higher returns. So the objective of risk management 
is not to stay away from taking decisions which involve risk, but it is one where we take calculated risks so that the returns that we get offset for the risk that we are taking. Broadly, risk is classified into three buckets. The first is what we call as preventable risks. Preventable risks are those that arise from internal factors such as your company's products, processes, systems, policies, technology and people. There are many more factors but I have broadly talked about all those things that can be prevented. Next involves strategy risks. Risks which are associated with an organization's business model. The decisions that the leaders in the organizations take. Choice of business partners. Decisions of entry into a particular market, etc. So those are potential risks that are associated with decisions or strategic decisions that your organization takes. And lastly, external risks are those that are not in the control of the company that are mainly because of the events which are happening outside the company relating to the factors such as macroeconomic scenarios, natural disasters, political events and many other macroeconomic phenomena. So organizations are constantly exposed to all these three different types of risks. And another point that I want to emphasize is that the whole of this lecture is inclined towards how you can enable or how you can reduce risk for your organization. While the concepts that I am going to introduce to you has been dealt with in this perspective, you can certainly apply it for your own self. When and where is risk assessment going to be useful for you? Risk assessment in the context of improvement projects where we have a problem and we are trying to come away from that problem and we want to put a new solution in place which will address that problem. In that kind of a scenario, in refinement of the solutions, we can certainly use risk management tools. In the case of a methodology like Six Sigma or TQM, we can use this in the improve phase. We can also use it to systematically reduce the operational losses that happens to the company. The amount of money that goes out of the company because of the losses it makes. It can be used in new product development. What we don't want is to conceive and create a product and put that product into the market and later realize that the service volumes for us has drastically increased. The calls from the customers has increased because these products that we put in market had some errors in them. So we want to make sure that the reliability of the product is high and the potential rate of failure is much lower, thereby giving us consistent performance and higher customer satisfaction. So it can be used to proactively reduce risks or potential losses in new product development. And what many companies are now realizing and starting to do is to figure out a systematic way of reducing risk in their business. Particularly relating to operations because in operations the complexities involved were much more and risk is highly controllable. So this is called as operational risk management and many organizations today are deploying risk management tools and strategies in this area very widely. What are the most commonly used risk management tools? The list here talks about some of the popular tools but this list is not exhaustive. Failure mode effects analysis in short called as FMEA. Very popular tool which we will deal in greater detail in this course. Fall tree analysis in short called as FTA. SWOT analysis I don't need to talk about it all of us know. Risk and control assessment matrix, very commonly used in financial services organizations to find out ways of mitigating risk by putting controls in place. Reliability studies, primarily used in businesses such as manufacturing to make sure that their product that they put in the market is more reliable. So these are the various tools that are commonly used for risk assessment. In the following videos, we will talk about Failure mode effects analysis in greater detail.